been about two weeks. But we're back. Yo, dog. We're, <laughs> we're back. Rat. Okay, uh, this is why we were gone. This is why we were gone. Some of you may have seen my update video, but I, un- I unlisted it because it was because I was just needing to give an update. Um, I was sitting on the recliner one night, and I yeeted my my laptop off my lap by accident. So it just absolutely destroyed the USB stick hand side of it, cracked my screen. Um, and that that particular USB stick um contained, <laughs> let's talk about recordings and all my assets for YouTube. Fun, you know. Thankfully. It was, I could reassemble it to the point where I could transfer that all into a spare SD SD card I have. So, thankfully, I still have all that backed up. Because I do save every Let's Talk About for a couple of reasons and just, you know, just in case I ever need them again. Things like that. But we are back. Yep. We're back again, baby. So, for how long? For how long? (laughs) Give me a pop note about this already, because I just I just was watching this before the call before the um I had Craig join, but <laughs> watching Barney live and apparently Barney says something that he probably shouldn't say. I'm gonna just I'm gonna play the audio here off my VHS tape. Yeah, I mean, Barney, no. <laughs> well, I mean, so he does down. have a black voice actor. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh, okay. So we were gone for two weeks, right? Um, and so we had two episodes recorded. One that already came out, and the other one that we recorded, we decided not to put out <laughs> because of some of the jokes we made in it. We got too edgy. Yeah. Got, I didn't mean to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we yeah. were a little Plus too edgy. I was edgy. playing Minecraft at the time, so my brain filter was more focused on uh, digging through, trying to get all the rocks I needed to build a fancier castle. To put it simply, um, we made jokes about a certain show creator at Nickelodeon. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> which one? Which one? The controversial one minute. or the very controversial one? <laughs> which. <laughs> Well, okay, I think I can only think of like one that's not controversial at Nickelodeon. <laughs> Wait, what's the good with Nickelodeon and all the controversial creators? You got Butch Hartman, John Kay, um, Dan Schneider, the Loud House creator. What he does? Safino, you mean? Yeah, he was just, well, we can't talk about it on this, but he's a just bad person, bad person. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, we made a jokes about the uh, oldest one that was there. Of all those people, the oldest one at Nickelodeon. At the Nickelodeon isn't for the longest, I think. Dan Schneider. We joked about Dan, Dan Schneider. Yeah, and Dan Schneider jokes just can't be defeated. And, hey. um, that's, all, all, that's the only one I'm saying. The- yeah, just the jokes we made were a little too edgy, so we decided we're like, nope. <laughs> we, we probably shouldn't put this one out. <laughs> So I saw we were gone for two weeks instead of just a week. Cause and then No. We were gonna re- we were gonna record another one to make up for that loss. But um I ended laptop. up forgetting I ended up forgetting until it was like Thursday. I'm like, oh crap, we're not gonna have enough time to record it and I'm not gonna have enough time to edit it. We'll just skip this week and do one for next week and here we are now. Yay. Mm-hmm. So, Gendy, you wanted to talk about um, gaming in like the early 2000s, right? Oh, yeah. Recently, I had uh, picked up a cheat code book from 2007 from a uh, thrift shop I love to visit. I, I remember right here, even... actually. I remember going there, and she's like, Oh, so now I get why you put the gaming book next to all the video games. Because she knows I regular the video game section, she set out one of those cheat code books that you would get at the book fair. <laughs> I'm trying to. I have one. I also picked up Michael Jackson: The Experience and a couple of uh, Call of Duty game boxes that didn't have the game in hey, them. Gindy, could you look up my cheat code book? Hold on, my cheat, cheat code. code. 
Okay, it's one by Brady Games. Cheat Code Explosion for Consoles, two books in one. Um, <clears throat> speaking of book fairs. <laughs> speaking of book huh? fairs, a while, a while ago, speaking of book fairs. Ah, <clears throat> oh, I need to drink or something. Um, we were out driving, me and my mom, a, like, probably like a month ago at this point. I had a YouTube short about this. I posted a YouTube short about this. Um, we we were just driving and passed by, and I see someone like, "Wait a minute, was that?" Oh my god! I'm like, "Can we please go there?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And she's like, "Yeah, sure." We found a Barton's and Nobles near my house. I did not know it was there. I step inside, and I smelt that air, and it smelt just like a Scholastic book fair. And it, oh my god, it took me way back. It took me back to Scholastic book fairs. And what really, really, really settled the deal that it was like exactly like a classic book fair was the kids section, where they had the Pokemon Pokedex book. <laughs> like, that is All like, right, have they gotten far like, enough to Gen Eight? I don't remember. I think it was like Gen Seven. I'm not sure. Wait, did you All look right. it up? <clears throat> yes, I sent a picture of it in the chat. Is this the one? Uh, no. Okay, speaking of early gaming, actually, this is really cool. I got this from a flea market. It's not in the box anymore. I have the box still, but um, it's a Mario bobblehead, right? And he's holding a GameCube in one hand, and then the other hand is like a controller of a GameCube. It's a GameCube controller. And on the little stand that he's on, it says GameCube, and he's a little bobblehead. And it comes with the box and everything. It's really cool. It has like GameCube games on the side, and, you know, and it looks into really this. rare. Yeah, I looked into it. It was like eight bucks, too. Hold on, I'm kind of oh, eight bucks. Come on in. It was eight bucks at the flea market, but online it was like eighty, <laughs> something like that. I remember, the last time I checked, which was probably ago. Rare. Like uh, over a year ago, I checked. But um, you got it by pre-ordering a GameCube at Target. I'm pretty sure. Which I I love this so much. I don't know where I put the box. So I think it's behind. I think it's up top behind my Pikachu McDonald's boxes. I have like six of them. Oh, <laughs> oh, you got. I don't remember how they did the years for the cheat code explosions. Most of the stuff is, I'd say, two thousand ends at like oh eight, because there's Lego Batman cheat codes in there. Because I've got the two thousand seven secret <clears throat> codes for ant console and handhelds. So I'm thinking mine might be two thousand eight, might be like late two thousand eight or early two thousand nine, because there's Mark- the, the, the newest game from oh eight. Yeah, I've got a Game Boy Advance, PSP, DS, PlayStation 2, 360, Xbox, mine's and got, GameCube. Mine's got... Because yours have the one where you flip... Mine is for consoles, and then you flip it over, and it's the one for... It's for handhelds. No, no. Mine's just a straight-up book with uh, coding. <laughs> it's so edgy. It's so edgy. There's little warning things. It says, Danger, Combustible. In two thousands, everything a... was edgy. Yeah, um, yeah. Literally, like, the cartoons were edgy. Like literally, literally cartoons were cartoon cartoons were literally edgy because all the like the sharp edges on them. <laughs> this might <laughs> actually be from a book fair. <laughs> um, it, it looks like a book fair. <laughs> it looks like a big okay, book fair Gindy, book. Gindy, it has PS three, Wii, three sixty. Then you flip it over, and it's DS, PSP, and SP. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Neato. Wow. Um, what? I, um... <laughs> look at my Barney live tape. The box is so beat up. I love everything about this. It's just... It's three and a half stars, and then, like, parentheses, out of four, USA Today. The songs, there's just a bunch of songs, and then just out of context, BJ's song, out of context, that does not seem like it should be on a Barney uh, tape. Um... Bernie, the like dancer how, was I like, good I was, to celebrate children's and childhood. You know, it's our I like dream how, to have Bernie become a child. I like, I like how I like how the I like the trick they do with um all those review things. And they make it like it'll be like it, like you said, three stars out of four. All they do is low. All they do is lower the number, so it seems more impressive. Four <laughs> stars out of five. Yeah, but it's the fact that it's, it's like three stars and then just a half symbol and an exclamation point and then parentheses so, out the of four. The ranking thing for like game reviews and all that is stupid because it's just 
how do you even get like a oh this game's a solid seven out of ten? <laughs> what does that even mean? Wild. I hate when they say a game is alien hominid. What you I like hate... that really bad? We can do the cheat code for everything in alien hominid. I hate honestly. I think no game is a ten out of ten because there's no such thing as a perfect game. Even my favorite game ever is not a perfect game. It's not a perfect time. game. Soul Silver is perfect. Argument of Time is it, it is so overrated. I'm gonna be honest. You know, okay. The only problem I have with Soul Silver is the fact that it's not on Switch right now. Let's put everyone let's start petition port it to Switch. You know, we're getting Devin Pro Remix. Let's get Soul Silver and Hurricane yeah. Remix. We make the remakes. <laughs> Dude, if they remake the remake, we're just gonna get a Let's Go Johto. I don't yeah, care. Because... It's Johto. I, I have remake... such a major Johto bias. With Let's Go, what they remade. They, they remade a remake. Johto. I don't think there are they two to Pokemon. That... No, no. Like, Pe what Pokemon would be the starters? Pichu and Togepi. Okay. Let's go. They're, I don't think they're going to do Let's Go. I don't think they're going to do Let's Go anymore because I think it was just a thing to go with the Pokemon Go trend at the time. Maybe. Hey, hey. Don't be hating on Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is a beautiful game. Okay, I think I've talked about this before in the podcast, but I want to talk about this again because there was a theory that got brought up by another, by a YouTuber that makes so much sense and explains everything. So, the Dan Schneiderverse, right? That's what I'm going to call oh, no. it. No, oh. no, 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 no. I'm going to call it the Dan Schneiderverse call the, because... Call it the Nick, the Nick Carly, Converse, so you don't have to mention Dan Schneider. No, it's fine. I'm not bringing up anything about what he's Nick, done. Nick but, no, it's not the Nickelodeon universe. It shows that he... Anyways. Okay. In iCarly, Carly watches Drake and Josh. Several times, she's seen Drake and Josh. In Sam and Cat, however, Crazy Steve is in a facility, and it's like he's in a mental stabi uh, stability. You don't see his face, but it's Crazy Steve. In Victorious, which is connected to, this, to iCarly because of the... Because that's his sister's show, and because of Sam and Cat, um, Kat says they did it on Drake and Josh, referencing it as a show. But then Helen appears in the show, and she says she worked at the premiere, and she even references Crazy Steve. And then um, Craig and Eric appears in iCarly too. So it's like such a confusing thing: is it a show or is it real life? Oh, oh. Still brought, and then there's still that girl Stacy obsessed with uh, yeah. cotton swabs and wet glue, and she was okay. even in Zoe 101. Someone brought this up, and it makes so much sense. I, it was driving me crazy. I'm like, okay, is it a show or is it like an actual people? It's a reality show. That's why they do the. That's why they do the video blocks at the beginning. It's a reality Maybe. show, and it makes so point. much sense. It makes a lot. So you know, reality shows. I love. This is gonna be like spoilers for Live and Maddie, but I love Live and Maddie's finale. Um, it's a Disney Channel show. Let me give the context here. In the episodes, they all always have a, they have a cut. They have cutaways to the characters talking, like it's like a like a reality show interview. So, in the final episode, um, Joey, the brother, is doing one of these, and then like one of the like one of the side characters comes out, and like he's like like from like he's just like talking, and he comes out from like the door. And he's like, "What are you? What are you? What are you doing?" He's like, "Well, you don't know." Me. He's like, "Well, you don't know." We we record a reality, reality show for France. <laughs> It's like it's like it's like such a like like and then like zooms out and you see like a camera crew and everything. It's Wait, like Living Maddie was a reality show the whole time. Yeah, the look okay, the series finale is such a good episode because of that. Oh my god, I love it. I love Living Maddie was such a good show, man. It's like one of the last really good Disney Channel shows, honestly. What about Andy Mac? No, I don't like Andy Mac because they ruined the whole twist. Or the like, it's like it's like it's like Andy, they have something to tell you. What's the big twist? Find out in the premiere of Andy Mac. And then like, like and then later on it's like and then it's just like, I'm not your sister. I'm your mother. Like in one of the commercials, like, oh. Well, I guess I'm not watching that now. I know the twist. Alright, I'm not interested anymore. Oh this man, that's wild. just like that show is wild. That's, like, that's what Family Guy made fun of in one of the things. It's like, Cleveland, you're back. Unless Fox messed it up in the promos. <laughs> My dog's barking. That show is absolutely wild. Like, I, okay, so there's the gay character, which yeah, it's awesome that they have that. But it's it's so weird to hear a character straight up on Disney Channel say I'm gay. Like he straight up said I'm gay. <laughs> like it was a, it was just inferred at first. 
But then he later on he strips said, I'm gay, which is amazing. You know, you know, it's a surprise it doesn't even let that happen considering that they cut out the gay kiss from sentence two. But anyways, dang, I, oof. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, hey, to be fair, the one... Disney sitcoms don't appeal to China, so Disney want... Disney doesn't have to worry about that. Okay, don't quote me on this, and I don't want to bring anything up by saying this, but I think one of the plot lines in Andy Mac, I'm not sure though was the dad of, of Andy Mac. He went to, he was in jail for a while and it was because he was texting a minor in ways that I can't say or is doing things with a minor. I don't know if that's actually oh. true or not because I've never watched the show, but I don't know if that's true or not. If that's true, then this show is just wild. <laughs> this show is wild. When you, te- when you text point- in the Minecraft voice. <laughs> oh, I, love the, this- I love the Gravity Falls joke. <laughs> we don't serve minors. Dang, <laughs> and the guy's also got the chin, the chin, the forehead tattoo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the chin, the chin is forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love Gravity Falls so much. It was such a good show. You know the cops were gay? Until the Fire Nation attacked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The cops, were, cops were gay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. It was obvious. Yeah, but Alex Hirsch said on Twitter that Disney wouldn't let him like explicitly say it. So, yeah, but now, now, now they got the um. Oh my God, was there? I'll lose or whatever. She's the um, first bisexual character in a Disney Channel show. Animated, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it's cool because it's Disney. Disney is a soulless corporation wait, who doesn't wait, care. Wait, 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 What do you mean? The, what do you What do you mean? What the sisters in the Loud House is bisexual? Pop, that's not Disney. That's Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon yeah. doesn't matter. They've dishonored the wishes <laughs> of a dead man. Okay. I, I'm in such at a, like, I don't know how to react to the Cold Camp Coral controversy. Because... <gasps> That's three Ks. It's never... It was oh, no. never... It was never said, like... Like explicitly, like I, he never really said, "I don't want this to be a, I, I don't want spinoffs." Yeah, he but joke about spinoffs. He never explicitly said. He said the ah! quote, the I don't know if this is the exact quote, but this is pretty similar. He said, "Um, I just know they're gonna try to do like something like SpongeBob babies, and when they do that, that's when I'm out." That's what he said. He didn't say like I don't want spinoffs. No, and and, and he knew about the show. Didn't they didn't say how he felt about the show, but he, they said he knows about the show. He knew about the show. Yeah, it's still scummy what Nickelodeon did. He was in such a state that he probably couldn't even make his own opinion on it. And technically, he even if he wished that the spinoffs didn't happen, he just didn't have power. Nickelodeon owns what? SpongeBob. Once you pitch a show to like Nickelodeon, let's say, like let's say I made a show and I pitched it to Nickelodeon, they own everything on that show. I get like some you know percentage of money off that, but they own the rights to that show. I can't do anything without their permission. So right, he wouldn't right. have, have had any power, anyways, even if they did it after. Or during when he was alive, they could have done this like ten years ago. He still would have had no power. So, and people would keep on putting dead words into this dead man's mouth, and it's really like kind of heartbreaking that they're doing this because you're like, that's all the legacy of it's going to be for this Camp Coral. Yeah, Camp Coral is sucks that they're doing this. Yeah, it sucks that they're like just starting to milk SpongeBob this much, but at the same time, it's like you just got to give it a chance. For- <laughs> Most SpongeBob since the even since at- the two thousands with all the. All the excessive merchandise of everything. I'm just talking like shows now because now they're just doing spinoffs. Like they should have really waited that for that announcement. Like they announced it like really soon after his death. Like that was just, I think it was just poor timing, just mismanagement, and I don't know. I'm gonna watch. I have to watch this show and judge it for myself. Honestly, um, a, a, a kind of similar I... thing. A kind of similar thing when Captain Marvel was coming out. They and, and it wasn't too long after Stan Lee died. And they use Stan Lee. They use Stanley's Twitter to promote Captain Marvel. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, uh, like see Captain Marvel only in theaters, and they just straight up used his Twitter. Um, after he was dead. I forgot to bring this up while we're talking about the whole LGBT thing, but um, <laughs> I love how Disney like tweeted. They're like, oh, check out our first LGBT character in in our movie in a Pixar movie." But okay, first off, there's many things wrong with that. First of all, there was two moms in Finding Dory. Right? Finding Dory, was it? Yeah. Then, <laughs> the character... 
Like, like it's only like one. Like oh, my girlfriend's kids driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah, that I'm what? sure they changed that line for in foreign markets. Yeah, Dang. because Disney doesn't oh. care about actual diversity. They just want uh, money from everyone. Uh yes, in the Blue Sky movie that they were, that was going to come out, that was actually going to feature the main character was going to be LGBT and it's going to have an on screen um, same sex kiss. That got canceled because Disney destroyed Blue Sky. I wonder if they yeah. destroyed Blue Sky they're, for they're not, that. They're not. They're not completely. They're not comp- They they got rid of the studio itself, but the people the people that were at Blue Sky are now going to work at uh, Disney Animation. Yeah, that's okay. That's the least they could really do. I'm glad. I'm glad they relocated everybody though. But there's still but there's still going to be an Ice Age show on Disney Plus. So that means they're probably not done with the Blue Sky properties. No, no, I think it's the studio itself is getting shut down to um to make it more simple. Like they're going to use the same assets oh, yeah. probably. Oh yeah, this is this is unrelated. But <clears throat> they they announced they announced the release date for Min, the Minions 2 and no more. Oh man, please. when is it coming out? This year? Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. It was weird to hear, seeing all this like marketing for Minions 2 because then they just delayed it. But the yeah, reason they, they did that is because they had a Lego set. I was at Christmas shopping and I saw the it Lego was because, set. It was because like in the contracts and the licensing, they um like this is when the movie's gonna come out. This is when this product should come out to encode with yeah, the movie. They, yeah, they ended up building they had the movie the, at such uh, a late like, notice. Yeah, they ended up building the movie at such a late like, notice. They had to um they, all that merchandise could not be delayed, so they had to you know push it out. They had the McDonald's, it's McDonald's the toys for it, but it, they had McDonald's toys, yeah. but it only said this. It all said was despicable me, I believe, since they didn't really. I don't think they re- released the reveal the title or something. I, the, third, the third, the Sponge on the Run marketing is just, you know how it always say like coming soon or like or the release date at the end. I love because it, it was just such a messy release date. It would just say at the end, see the movie, see the movie, <laughs> see the movie. It was, like a, it was like a threat. It was such a threatening thing. It was just like see the movie. <laughs> it's not even please see the movie. It's just see the movie right now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Could you look up? Could you look up that world? Gross. What? What you liked out? What? How? How much? Can you look up Sponge on the Run's oh. World Run Gross? Yeah, I'm compared well, to like the previous two movies. Well, it hasn't come out in America yet. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but it has if you got a VPN. On, is it on Paramount Plus? When that um, launches? That launches this month, right? Yeah, it comes out in like three days. We're recording this on the first of March, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it comes out when this is this podcast comes out. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah, it's my ber- it's my birthday this month. Oh yeah, everybody say happy birthday to Pop. Yeah, you better say it. I know. Please, and if please, you want to, uh... right oh Pop, Pop, next Hi. the next podcast will be on your birthday. Yay! On fourth March, yeah. All right, so it has this. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. I did not make it. Wait, what was the budget on it? Oh, no. Okay. Okay, the budget. <laughs> you must be so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. The budget. The budget for this movie. The budget for this movie was sixty million USD. The box office. Uh huh. Four point eight million USD. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Just wow. wow. Let's see. How much did the original movie do? The budget for the original movie was thirty million. It made a hundred and forty-one point one million. <laughs> wow. See, what what about sure. um, sponge out of water? Uh, sponge out of water. Sponge out of water. Let me find that. Sponge out of water yeah, yeah. Was, was very gimmick. It was very like gimmicky, kind of near the like the past okay. the last like twenty minutes. Um. I <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, okay. First, let me. The budget was sixty to seventy four million and then made thirty three hundred and twenty five point two million. Wow, that'd be really good. Well it's SpongeBob nowadays, but um 
So I had to the first movie, quiet down a this bit is the problem. because of this is this is my main problem with the third movie. I hate the third movie. Okay, the first movie, fantastic finale to classic SpongeBob. It's like such a perfect. But now that's honestly for me, that's where it ended. And then, you know, season four. That's uh, Magnum Opus. Second, second, like... second movie. Second movie is a really good movie. And it, is, and it represents SpongeBob in that era so perfectly because it's transitioning, flaws, out of the, but... it's transitioning out of the terrible era to the new era where it's good content again. And then the third movie represents this era. In the sense that it's a corporate cash grab that has no SpongeBob charm to it, ha- features Snoop Dogg ra- have a Snoop Dogg rap number for no reason. <laughs> the movie halts everything just so this like you all of a sudden just Snoop Dogg turns around in a bar stool and just like he just starts rapping a song for no reason. <laughs> he's just hey yo SpongeBob. But I will say this much. To him. It is <laughs> good the that they got person. Matt Barry to play King Poseidon. <laughs> the it, most it sure seems <laughs> over. <laughs> okay, it sure how seems Sponge- over. How is SpongeBob saying "crappy" more shocking <laughs> than Tom Kenny actually swearing in SpongeBob's voice? Because <laughs> it's the actual character, and not just like Tom Kenny. Because it's actually Kenny- see his mouth mouth move doing it. And then SpongeBob saying, "Okay, so he's so perfect and annoying." It's so cursed. Oh, I don't like SpongeBob saying crappy. <laughs> it's wrong. But yeah, me and Pop watch that movie. Um, you don't need to know how. And it's just... <laughs> it is such a bad movie. I hate it. I honestly yeah. hate the third movie. And it you has, know nice, what it has nice animation. But when something has nice animation... It's kind of just standard now, so it's not yeah. that impressive. Okay, yeah, our point you a nice it? animation too, dude. Have you seen Minion animation, the Minions movie animation, like in like London when it's a like, cloudy? Oh my god, they actually look like the Minions are actually there. Like, and like it looks like an actual picture that someone took of like the Minions in real life. It is yeah, they put, they put work into a very good movie. <laughs> yeah, I I'm I'm, I'm the, really excited to see. I'm really excited to see what they do for the Mario movie. Honestly. Next year, right? I think so. I wonder when we're gonna get Sonic comes out. Next, Sonic something. comes out next year, and I'm so ready. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's gonna be Mario and Nintendo. Um, not Mario and Nintendo. It's Sega. So, no, um, Mario, Sega Mario and Sonic. Mario and Sonic are gonna be coming out both the next year. Yeah, 2022. I am excited. Well, for it. I think it's and my, prob- uh, and, oh yeah, see, that is probably gonna that's probably gonna be a new Mario and Sonic game. September 16th of um 2022. You know, you know they made you know they made a, Mar- a Mario and Sonic game out of an Olympic an Olympics that was canceled. Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm expecting to maybe make another one soon. What? You, what? What is this? Wait. Okay. Okay. So Google has a thing. You know, the people who also asked, and it's like, will there be a Mario movie? You know, is there a Super Mario movie coming out? How did Luigi die? How did and then the thing is just as he dropped to his knees, the Reaper cut him in two. The scene was unusual. Oh, it's from a Smash from trailer. The most horrific thing Luigi would ever have seen before his final moment was Bowser's dentistry. Upset fans were quick to quick, quick to tweet and collectively mourn. Some comment on the graphic nature of his murder. <laughs> Luigi is dead. Oh yeah, wow. Kit. If you, wa- if you watch, if you watch. There's a, there's like a checklist, like people like the like with like Nintendo Directs people put on the like they make their Nintendo Direct bingo things that are in it. One of them is Link dies in a Smash reveal trailer. <laughs> Watch the trailers and Link almost always dies. He die he he. Oh, currently the latest one is uh, Xenoblade. He dies. <laughs> He, he just dies over and over and over and over. He just can't. He just can't be. Do we live in, huh? I love. I love. <laughs> Man, I can't my throat with that loud laugh. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. So, so it's, it's showing the cast of the Mario movie, right? And it's like mixing in like um the original movie, and then just like it has Shigeru Miyamoto. And the picture that's for Shigeru Miyamoto, he just looks so like he looks so shocked, like he like he didn't like know the picture was about to be taken of him. 
Like the flash was like on super high. I'm gonna put, okay, I'm gonna. It's gonna torture me to edit. But I'm gonna actually no. This is gonna be in the thumbnail. This is gonna be. This is gonna be in the thumbnail. <laughs> he just looks so shocked by the picture being taken. Oh yeah, did you did you hear did you hear um what Miyamoto did in uh, the nineties? Hmm. Okay, oh, what did he do? He he did not re- at the time in the nineties around like ninety eight nine ninety seven ninety eight when they were develop when uh they were de- developing um Star Fox sixty four. Miyamoto mm-hmm. regularly went on smoke breaks because he smoked at the time. And instead of going outside to smoke or anything like that, or he went into the American, the American developers th- of making the American version, the English version of Star Fox sixty four, and he smoked in there purposely just to spite them. Yikes! <laughs> and that is the most unmiyamoto thing I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, we all have our own dude. I. So mean. I love their stories from the Grinch 2000 set of like um uh what's his name Jim Carrey he just hated working on the movie so he would just disappear for like two weeks like no one could find him he'd just be gone <laughs> he said this during the Grinch episode I think oh but then he Grinch. would just reappear <laughs> it's amazing I love it. He's so good in the Sonic he just had movie. He just had to hold filming because he's just gone. Yeah, and then they, they would disassemble the sets and then he would reappear. So they'd be like, oh crap, now we gotta re. But they couldn't film because they didn't have the sets up all finished. They didn't have the sets up anymore. <laughs> just leave. Wait, how's my TV still on? Oh, I've into a different outlet, right? Okay. Duh, I'm stupid. Uh, you're wild. <laughs> I had my phone plugged in. I had my phone, pl- phone plugged in. And I forgot I changed outlets on my power cord. Whatever. Long story. Whatever. I love that Shigeru Miyamoto picture, though. He just looks so like, like, oh my god, someone's taking my picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Miyamoto is probably a very cool guy to hang around with. He does seem like. He gives me, like, what? he would be your, he's like, he's like, he's like a, like, like your dad energy. Like a dad energy. It, it sounds weird. But people just sometimes just give you like energy that they're like someone's like like wholesome dad. That's how that's Markiplier gives that energy off to me. Markiplier is just like the and I know that dad Sakurai uh, does some cosplaying. Have you guys ever seen um? Uh, what was it? It's the Square Roots documentary of SpongeBob. Um, there's footage of the SpongeBob premiere. And there's like you see like Steven Hillenberg in the back row, he looks so proud, and it's just such <laughs> it hits me so hard because it's like it's such, it just he looks so proud of it. I love that so much. Of what? Of uh, the premiere when like they're watching him and him and the crewmates of SpongeBob are watching the um the the first episode, like like the night before the premiere or the night of the premiere, and it's we just like that... footage of him watching. Me and Kit watched the documentary just, oh. of. Spongebob documentary and it was like really good. Yeah. I remember watching a Spongebob di- d- d- documentary that had a... It's a diarrhea. I think it was called like Behind the Pantis or something. What was the one we called? Is that, is that the one we watched, Kit? No, we watched Square Roots. If you haven't seen Square Roots, honestly, you should, see, you should watch Square Roots because... He hasn't had it that I will never, I will never top the spun, the part where it's like, um, how they thought it was hilarious how the SpongeBob was gay is amazing. I love just like the, 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 the the edit just like like SpongeBob gasping and standing going ah, I'll never be able to top that. It's amazing. I got Gindy coughed. Oh my god. That's an omen. No, no, I need coughed. I swear. Oh my no, god. No, I... <laughs> I love the first SpongeBob movie so swear. much. It... <laughs> I love the opening to the it's SpongeBob movie is amazing. So nostalgic. And that's why it's the intro to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, he's right. 
Every time my mom buys a pineapple, I imagine carving the skin so I could make a house for SpongeBob. Oh, I thought that you was know, going that somewhere. Could, I was like, I imagine carving take, the skin. That way we could uh, <laughs> take out the filling and uh, put in uh, furniture, you know, like a TV or the metal framing. At least I think it's metal because that's what it showed in that one episode where SpongeBob's pineapple was rotting. Well, the middle frame in it? it? It fell off a sailboat in Truth or Square, which is totally canon. Did you know that? Did you? I've, I've, I, okay. I have, I have two things to talk about Truth or Square. One complaint and one, huh, neat kind of thing. I'll go with the, huh, neat first. SpongeBob and Sandy are actually married because, um, the, <laughs> afterwards, like, this is the worst play ever. And then, like, the priest is just like, I didn't know this was a play. Because he was an actual priest. So yeah, they're <laughs> actually married. How fun is that? And then the second... Okay, second point. Wait. There you go, shippers. At, at the end of Truth or Square, it says, I will be seeing you for the 20th anniversary, which is 10 years from now. They lied. So, yeah, we never got Truth or Square. I was honest to God. I had like a, kind of like a little hope in the back of my head. I'm like, oh, probably not it, was, it was just a joke thing. I'm not going to do it. I had the smallest little hope in the back of my head that they'd make a Truth or Square 2 or some kind of reference to it. Hey, hey, <laughs> at least... Fair. What we got we with got the 20th better. anniversary. I love at the end of that Did we? where um you see you see everybody and there's like some of the cast of the Sponge musical, which I I love, and I just wow when I saw that I was like oh my God. SpongeBob. I was I got ah, so that's, excited. That's so part that's part of that's part of Kit's ten that, that's part of Kit's ten trillion uh All right. videos he hasn't written yet. It's video ideas that I have for the future when I actually make S videos essay video essays. I got I got I got I got things planned in my brain. I've just been working in college and playing Splatoon. Mostly Splatoon. <laughs> ah, Splatoon, so important. hmm I've been trying to get registered for college and things like that. I'm playing Splatoon and Minecraft. But I do I do I do got things planned for YouTube. Um, right now, the most biggest project I'm going to try to work on is not the cars tape. Like that, that one's going to be um, <coughs> held off for a while. But I want to make a history of Thomas Magic Railroad because I've been obsessed with this movie <laughs> for years. I've been obsessed with learning everything about this movie, like every like picking it apart. So, and every little like the h- troubled history of it, every little thing from the start of the making of the start of the process of when a Thomas movie was being talked about to where we are now with the Blu-ray getting released and the Thomas Magic Railroad parody that someone made. Um, Vinny. I, I know his name is Vinny, so I'll just call him Vinny. I want to talk from that point to that point. That's I, Okay, like, Boomer. It's such, it's such a massive... Oh, you're like, one, Boomer. It's such a massive thing to tackle, so I'm like, kind of procrastinating on it at the same time, but I'm also was like waiting for some emails back from people, but they ain't going to respond to me. I tried to contact him to restore the magic, but <laughs> they didn't respond to me, which not shocking. They're not really good people, but tried contacting but all Croft. But but wait, but they're but they're restoring the magic. They're not good people. I tried contacting uh Britt Allcroft, but she didn't respond. No no surprise there. She hates um, you. I know. I I I gotta like I gotta research and contact some other people and things like that still. So, then I also have a video series planned. Um, I forgot what I'm going to call it. It's essentially um, how I would write movies for franchises, like how I'd make a Mario movie, how I'd make a Thomas movie, how I make how I would make a Minecraft movie. Basically, giving like little pitches to um, <laughs> like how I would make movies for franchises, and like even take take like some of the movies that already came out, like improve them a little bit. I like, take their basic plot structure and like rework it to more like akin to what I would probably make. You know? Oh, like Michael Bay. Yeah, but less explosions. Good. So still explosions? And less Bud Light. <laughs> less what? A lot of the Michael Bud Bay Light. movies have Bud Light beer. Bud Light beer. When you don't know, yeah. you don't, 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 don't drink and un, unless you unless you're old enough. Don't drink at all. That's my philosophy. Y- yeah.
that's whatever we were talking about for you. <laughs> so other than Craig. that, Mrs. Uh, Lincoln, how'd you enjoy the play? I hate the Discord recording bot, Craig. Um, it crashes every time we try to record something. It crashes. So I don't know where we cut off, but we're going to wrap it up because we've been recording for If anyone has a better now. bot, link it to us in the comments. Please. Please. Oh, my God. I've tried to find other ones, but it just, Craig does not want to work at all. OBS is a terrible quality. It, it was um, the St. Claus 3 episode. We used that, but it was just terrible quality. Anyways, we're going to wrap this up. Any final thoughts? Any, any final words? Uh, I just battled uh, a Landorus. Yeah. You know, those thoughts. Maybe I can well, catch it on the recording. Well, we're about to wrap it up, and i got to say the thingy. All right. Be kind, rewind, and we'll see you next time.